a burrow with only one entrance. With a parenti in the picture, a sanctuary can easily become a death trap. The body of one fearsome reptile disappears into the body of another. The months roll on, and Rusty has grown in both size and experience. He weighs 150 pounds now and has dozens of sparring matches under his belt. Today, he finds himself with a mob he's met before. The one with the tough male who intimidated him last time. But that was five years ago and Rusty's not running away this time. Each tries to attack his rival's head. Each instinctively keeps his own head back out of range. Although highly ritualized, fights between dominant males can mean a future as king or a loner, depending on the outcome. Testicles can be retracted. Don't want those damaged. Rusty with the darker fur is putting up a good fight, but the alpha male is more experienced. Females don't care who wins, just so long as he's got good genes. But Rusty is younger than his opponent, and in top fighting form. Finally, the king goes down. Now the mob is paying attention. Rusty's the top male now, and to the victor go the spoils. His first choice is this female, though he needs to give her urine the sniff test to make sure she's ovulating. She's ready. But Rusty has only a brief window of opportunity. She may only be receptive for a matter of hours. Better get to it. Mating doesn't take long, or wouldn't if there were only one female to consider. But Rusty's got miles to go before he sleeps. He's King Kangaroo now, and in addition to regular mating duties, he'll have to fend off other young roos who'd like to knock him off his throne, just as he did his predecessor. But that's not all Rusty has to worry about. The temperature is soaring and the land is drying out. Evaporation is sucking the life out of everything, flora and fauna alike. You can never tell when the weather will change, only that it will. And that's the origin of some of the red kangaroo's most amazing adaptations. They're masters of heat regulation. The fur on their backs reflects about 30% of incoming heat and keeps their skin cool. The blue parts of this thermal footage Spreading saliva over their forearms cools the blood, which has been brought close to the skin surface via a dense cobweb of capillaries. With temperatures simmering above 100 degrees for over a week, a third of the males have already become infertile. If these temperatures were to continue for three more months, the number would more than double. 
Reds defend their sperm by licking their scrotums to keep them cool. And in contrast to their battle strategy of retracting the scrotum, males let their testicles hang way down below their overheated trunks, keeping them about seven degrees cooler than at their cores. The sand, even a few inches down, is cooler than at the surface. Red kangaroos dig until they reach cooler soil. And then... Rusty, no nourishment. But then, unfortunately, these are dry electrical storms. No rain will come from them. But something else will. Something worse than hunger. Lightning has ignited the dry grass of the outback. The kangaroos can easily outrun a grass fire. Almost 10% of arid Australia can burn like this in a single year. In a matter of hours, the fire consumes what little forage there is. Rusty has to move on. really nowhere to go. Not this time. Parts of desert Australia are in the grip of a once in a century drought, while heat waves smash temperature records. Nothing that lives here has ever experienced anything like it. Rusty included. Some are suffering from severe malnutrition and dehydration. But if anyone can survive this, it's a red kangaroo. Human bodies are about 60% water. Rusty's is over 70%. Even in a heat wave like this, he can survive levels of dehydration that would kill most humans. Reds only sweat when they're on the move. At rest, they pant, which uses less water than sweating. Raising their breathing rate to over 200 breaths a minute reduces their deep body temperature and cools their brains. And of course, they cover their limbs in cooling saliva. But there's a price to pay. Licking uses up precious water if the drought continues much longer, this form of cooling will be too costly. The kangaroos stay under whatever shade they can find. When times get this tough, females switch off their milk supply. Maternal instinct is strong, self-preservation is stronger. Unweaned offspring outside the pouch are the first to die and the young in the pouches are next. As it dies, the female reactivates her waiting embryo. But if the drought persists, it too will die, and she will stop reproducing altogether. Even Rusty, one of the strongest, is in trouble. In these conditions, the males are the first to succumb, especially the largest, who, like Rusty, need more food. of the red kangaroos is the wedge-tailed eagle's bounty. And it's not just the kangaroos that are suffering. The drought is taking its toll everywhere. Predators turn on each other to protect a tiny piece of rancid meat. 
This is the last remaining waterhole. It's stagnant and salty. Ordinarily, the animals would never drink this water. Desperation drives them. The drought makes for uneasy bedfellows. <laughs> 